Hello friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly, I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm gonna to show you a makeover of a trash to treasure. This was, this little frame was at the dump and somebody was throwing it away. They set it aside instead of throwing it in the dumpster and well, along came Shelly and snatched it up. So I'm gonna try and do a sign with this. I also found a little wooden spice rack which I'll show you later on, but I uh, found that might have been a yard sale. Not sure where I got it. There was no tag on it, so I can't remember. But anyway, it's going to fit on this little frame, so I am going to attach it. But first, I'm going to cut down this piece of foam board that I have to put a backing on it. So I just put the two edges in the frame and then used a pen and traced it out so that I could get the right size. There is a lip on the inside for something to sit in there so it will sit up nice and close to the front of the uh, picture frame which is pretty neat. So I'm just going to cut this out with a razor blade and make sure it fits. If it doesn't I can just go right back in and trim it up with some scissors or with the razor blade whichever and it looks like it fits nice and tight. So I'm going to take this Waverly plaster colored paint and I'm going to do two coats all over this board. So here's, here's the little wooden shelf that I got somewhere and I'm going to attach that to the front of my frame and I just set it on there. I have to have it down just a little bit from the frame so it's not even with the bottom. I want to make sure the screw that I put in there goes right through the beefier part so that it doesn't break or mess with putting the foam board in the back. So I just drilled two little holes so that it wouldn't crack any of the wood because both of these pieces are very dry and thin so they have a chance of cracking. So I'm just making sure that's on there straight and then just putting another screw in through there. Taking it down in my layer, as I like to call it, and down there just sanding the sanding it down just a little bit just to get some of the crud off and uh, the shininess off there. So I just go around all the edges. Then I'm taking some Rust-Oleum flat black spray paint and gonna give it, I think I just did one coat on this. It didn't really need a full uh, two coats, maybe just touch-ups here and there. I'm going to go back in and sand it down and give it a seal coat of clear paint, spray paint, so it should be fine. So I'm taking my screen print of the uh, Crow that I've had. I've used this several times. I'm going to put that on the board and then I'm going to use the writing from this other one to go over the top and the bottom. So I want to just make sure I get it centered in the middle-ish the best that I can on this frame. And I also put the frame over it uh, just to make sure I had it in the right spot, you know, everything lined up well. And I mostly eyeballed it. There was no measuring or anything like that. So I'm taking my folk art black paint and I'm going to give this bird a little once over with the brush and then I take a wooden tag that I have and use that to drag the paint in through the screen and make sure I get it around where I need it. And here is my big crow that I did. This came out really good. Now there are some spots that I did have some bleed over or bleed through, but not many. It wasn't really too, too bad. It came out very nice. And I am just going to dry it. I'm showing you the, the spots there. The star has got a little extra and around the leg. And uh, in that little loop there, you get just a little extra paint. That's okay. It's to be expected. I have a small brush and some of that plaster paint. There you go, right there standing by and I just dried that paint up so I wasn't painting over the black paint that was wet. So that's all dry and I'm just gonna take this plaster paint and go over a few a few of the parts that 
I wanted to touch up and make look a little bit better. I'm not going to go crazy here. It's going to take two coats to go over that. Then later on, I am going to be sanding over this, and it does bring back those spots just a little bit, but it does add to the distressed age look, so I'm not really worried at all. But I usually don't panic when things like this happen and I have bleed through with my stencils. Uh, it typically can be fixed with just a little bit of paint or you can paint over it and start again. There's no need to, to panic if you get a little extra here and there. You just need to take your time, have a little patience, and it'll work out. Now, uh, now that that's all dry, I did use my, my heat gun and dried that really well. And I put my stencil down. This is Old Crooked River Seed Company. And I'm going to put that over the top. So I made sure I put a little clear piece of uh, plastic from the heads of the crows down so that it wouldn't stick to my crow painting. And also, if I went over with the black paint on my stencil, it wouldn't go onto the to the picture. So now here I again have some bleed over and some crazy spots, but really it comes out very nice. And again, I'm going to take this sandpaper and go really, really fast <laughs> over all this writing and kind of get rid of some of the bad spots and make it look aged and old and a little bit faded. And it takes away a lot of the spots that kind of over got oversaturated. You got to be careful wiping the black off that it doesn't smear. I think if it's chalk paint it will smear more than this paint does. This is the uh, acrylic paint from Folk Art so it's not chalk paint. So I blow it off but then you can kind of uh, wipe it later on. Now I'm taking some Waverly Antique Wax and rubbing it all over the, the picture frame. Now if you didn't want it this dark, you could add some water in another dish with a little bit of the antique wax and it would make it a lighter color. Uh, I wanted this really nice and aged, um, so I'm going to use it full strength. I also use it mixed with water with a little bit of black paint mixed into it and that gives it a little bit of a black hue to it. But I paint it all over and then I just wipe it back and see how it leaves that nice antique aged yellowed look on there and it looks like it's been around for a while. And then every time you go over it, it will leave a little bit of a darker area, um, you know, just layering it on there. So I just go and hit some spots here and there with it. and mostly around the edges, trying to get it to darken up around those edges. Then I'm just taking a dry brush of black paint, and just a little bit of a light brush of it, and going over the top to add some aged look as well. This next project I cut out some uh, crows uh, out of my scrap pine that I have and a dowel I cut it down and I found a wooden candlestick that I had I actually have two but I couldn't find the other one but anyway I'm taking some antique wax and going over that dowel and giving it a little bit of an aged look I sanded down this little candlestick and I thought it would look good with a little of that wax but I wasn't really happy with that so I just went over it with a coat of black folk art paint and gave it one coat all the way around. Now these uh, pine crows are my own creation. I, I kind of penciled these out. I've done them for years and I made up a bunch of them. So if you check my Etsy shop there will be some on there. I will have left and right facing if you have a particular one that you want. Um, 
and they're made of just scrap pine. I've got them sprayed with black spray paint and then sealed with some Rust-Oleum clear sealer. So I just drilled a hole in that um, candlestick then trying to figure out where I want it in my crow and I figured it out and you just want to find the right balance with it. So I drilled a hole in that and then stuck it on there and now I'm going to glue it to my little candlestick. Glue that down. I guess it's not really necessary if you have the hole tight enough. I just don't want it to fall apart. This will be either shipped or sold in my um, in my booth so I don't want it to get um, you know fall apart on, in somebody's hand so I glue it up. So I added some moss and now I'm adding pit berries which has a little rusty star on there and I'm gonna glue that on and just straighten those out. Adding a little piece of homespun material around his neck and he's done. guys liked my crow home decor if you haven't already please like share and subscribe I would appreciate it leave me a comment below and let me know if you like crow decor and if you only use it during this time of year in the fall or do you use it all year long in your home thanks for watching bye bye